Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1231, the Beach Bar Tiny House Add-ons, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. The Beach Bar is the sixth Tiny House Add-ons. We have five other styles that will convert that tiny house into other looks. In addition to the Tiny House and the Beach Bar, I am also going to use three other new dies from our February 2023 release. Here's the card that I'll be making in the video. Every hour is happy hour at the beach. So that's the new word set. And then you can see the borders, the labels, and the rectangles all used together in this card. Okay, first thing I'm going to work on is the bar itself. So I need the tiny house pop up as my foundation die. And from that one, I just need to use two pieces out of it. The one that cuts the house and the one that cuts the roof. The weight of the cardstock is not super important with the beach bar. I've just chosen a medium weight cardstock. I'm going to use temporary removable tape to hold the tiny house in place on that strip of cardstock. And then what I want to do with the beach bar tiny house add-ons is I want to grab the two dies that cut the cutouts for the bars themselves. So this one that has the point on it, that's real easy to figure out how that should be oriented. You just want to nest it in to this section of the tiny house die, just so you have an equal amount showing on the upper edges. And then with this one, since you could turn it around, it's got a little arrow to point which way is up. And just match again that you have it centered in there in an equal amount of cardstock showing through on the top left and right. Okay, quick pause here to say that you must choose these two locations for those cutout dies. You cannot swap them to the other two. It needs to be built this way so that the bar supports will work. Speaking of bar supports, this is the die that cuts them. It will cut two, and if you're doing a cutout on both sides of the house, then you're going to need four. So after I cut it this first time, I'll have to run back through and cut it again. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Okay, first let me grab those two bar supports that fell out of the die. There is a score line in each one of them to have a little fold underfoot. I always find it easier to put my thumbnail in that score line and fold towards myself first, and then I will reverse it because I do want those to be a mountain fold, meaning folded away from me. So I fold it valley, then I flip it, to become a mountain. So just two little bar supports that have those little feet. Okay, so now let's take a look at what the tiny house looks like with those extra dies nested in. They've basically made the cutouts and the support for the bar. So there are little score lines in those where you can fold the whole support over, but then also these two little tabs and everything folds towards you. So you've got two sets of folds, the little tabs out at the end, and then the long one to fold towards yourself. Okay, and then don't forget that there is a roof support on that same die for the tiny house, and you need that as well. Okay, now I'm going to run back through to cut two more of those little bar supports. And again, they have those little feet at the bottom. I'm going to fold those under. So fold towards myself first, and then under. For the tiny house, there is a tapered tab on one side, and then there are the folds for each panel, they all fold away from you. Then the ones at the bottom fold under the house. So basically everything in the tiny house part is a mountain fold. And then what you use is that little tapered tab out on the end to connect to the other side. I like glue for this. My favorite is Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle, and we do sell both of those items on our website. So just getting the fold line right to the edge of the house and getting it lined up and then I should be able to flatten the house and give it a good press, and that house will flatten in both directions. Now, just so I can clearly explain what I'm doing, I'm just going to throw a couple of brightly colored post-it notes inside that house so that you'll be able to see contrast around those tabs that I'm folding. Okay, for this step, I only want to fold down the four individual tabs on the two openings. Okay, so for the front and for the side, it's just the four small tabs that fold down. I'm not folding on the second fold yet. I'm leaving that where it started. Then I'm going to use those bar supports and glue them to those four little tabs. And it's the end next to the foot that goes at the bottom. And what I like to do is kick those tabs that are for the tiny house. I like to kick those inside the house. 
and then I basically have a flat edge at the bottom and I can use that to line up the end of my foot with that edge. Okay, so I add my adhesive to the small tab and then it's the foot end that goes at the bottom and it's the edge that goes right to the edge of the house, which is technically the fold line of the tab, but you get the idea. And so it's just attaching right now, the, the end that doesn't have the foot is the one that I'm gluing to the small tab. Okay, so it's basically gonna come to the top. It depends on where you put your opening. But, you know, it might not come all the way to the top, but that doesn't matter as long as there's enough that it overlaps that it can attach. So the foot end goes to the bottom and the top attaches to that tab. All right, so the first two bar supports are on and now I need to repeat that process to do the ones for the side bar. So it's the exact same process, some glue on the little fold down tab, the foot end goes at the bottom. Okay, so now all four of the bar supports are on. Okay, I'll take those post-it notes out and now I can add the roof support as I would for any tiny house. So the roof support comes with the tiny house die set. It has four tabs, the triangle ones on the side. I like to fold those and work those in both directions. Then there are two rectangle tabs on top. The one on the right goes to the back, the one on the left goes to the front. And then now I'm going to glue those triangle tabs to the tiny house so that they just line up with the roof peaks. So adhesive on the triangle tab, and then I just line it up with a roof peak. So the point of the tab is at the point of the peak. And then I just repeat that process by adding adhesive to the other triangle tab and line it up with the other roof peak. Then once the glue sets up, I can actually reverse and flatten the house the other direction, just making sure everything's connected. The forward tab folds to the right, the back tab folds to the left, and I'm gonna bring those tapered tabs on the bottom back out again. I'm going to cut the roof from the tiny house and then the thatched roof piece from the beach bar tiny house add-ons. Now that thatched roof piece is a very intricate die and a single time through is probably not enough. You're going to have to hit it two times, maybe three, and you wanna go with the die oriented vertically to your machine or maybe at a slight diagonal, but definitely not horizontally. You won't get good cuts if you go horizontal with it. So what I do is I go vertical, I hit it a couple, three times with my machine and I try to make sure that I have it under a section of my cutting pad that isn't too worn down or anything. So it's intricate. Hopefully you won't need to use a metal shim or anything. You know, if you usually just get some good pressure in your machine, it'll be fine, it'll cut it, but definitely go vertical with it when you do. It cuts two pieces at a time and you need six of them for a thatched roof. I'm using the tiny house roof as a base. So I fold that up the middle and then I'm going to add three of these thatched roof pieces to each side of the tiny house roof. There are different looks to that thatched roof. One way to do it is just to let that first row basically hit the card and fold up, and then that's going to give it a really cool distressed look. Or if you glue the first row down, then it's going to be a little bit more neat and polished, but you'll still have a little bit of distressing in your other two rows. And that really is just a matter of personal preference. So I'll use adhesive just along the top of my first row of thatch, and then I'm just going to line that up with the roof and get it glued down. And then for my second row, what I like to do is just look at the shingle pattern on the tiny house roof. And I basically just go down to kind of that second shingle line right there. And that seems to be a good spot to add my glue for my second row. And then again, I'm just going to put that into the glue. And then the final row will go right up at the top along the fold line of the roof. Now, could you add more rows of thatched roof? Absolutely, just really have fun with this. It's however you want to do it. Now, if you want to give it a more distressed look, like it's been there a long time or survived a hurricane or two, you can take a bone folder into a piece of fun foam and really curl up those thatched roof pieces before you glue them onto the house. And then that will give it more distressing and dimension. And then as it hits the card, some of those pieces will curl up. Or another option would be to manually lift up some of the thatch and create that distressing. Adding the finished roof to the tiny house is the same as normal. You just add some adhesive to one of the roof tabs at the top of the house, collapse it down, 
fold that tab under and get it into the fold of the roof. Then add adhesive to the other tab and glue it to the roof on the other side. So just centered over the top of those two tabs. Okay, and then once that glue sets up, the roof is attached and now this little beach bar is ready for a card. I would suggest at least an A2 card size, but card size is up to you. So for my card, I have started with a piece of cardstock, 12 inches by five inches and scored in the center for folding. And that makes a six by five landscape card. The biggest rectangle in our Rectangles and Labels Crosshatch die set is sized to fit a five by seven card. So what I've done is cut it out of both craft cardstock and a waves paper, and then I've cut each of those rectangles in half. And then I just glued them inside the card, leaving a little gap at the fold so that the paper wouldn't bunch. Now when I flatten the bar, I have to make sure that I flatten it so that I can see right through both windows and the tabs at the bottom are over the top of each other, not side by side. And then that edge of that tapered tab is going to line up with the fold. It can go basically anywhere along the fold as long as I keep the bar within the limits of the card when it is flat like this. Now in my excitement, I only put glue on my tapered tab and I should have added it to the two bar supports as well. So here's where I'm figuring out, uh-oh, I forgot to put adhesive on the two bar supports and in the end I decided just to peel it off of there. It's going right back in the same place anyway. But when I add my glue to that tapered tab, I also want to add it to the ends, the two feet for the bar supports. It's gonna be much easier to add those all at the same time when the card is flat. So adhesive on the tapered tab, adhesive on the two feet for the bar supports, and then I'm going to get that back now into the fold of the card where the edge of the tapered tab is butted up to the fold. I like to lift the card up so that I don't overshoot it. I don't want to cross the fold, but I want to be very close to the fold. And three things are being glued down right now. It's the tapered tab and the two feet that are underneath attaching the first half of the bar. So if I lift it up, you can kind of see how those are connected. Then I'm going to keep everything nice and flat and I'm going to add my adhesive to the other tapered tab and the other two bar feet. And then I definitely want to just hold everything flat while I close the left side of the card against that exposed adhesive. And then I'll just give it a good press until that glue sets up. Now when I first go to open the card, I like to go very slowly, maybe even reach in and kind of help the bar open up so that I don't pop off any of those little small feet for the bar support. So I want to make sure that those are nice and secure before I open everything up. But you can see that everything is connected now and it is ready for decoration. The upper right and back left corners of the roof, if you will curl those under with something like a bone folder, it really helps the operation of the tiny house. And that's true no matter which style you're making. So the beach bar as well. If you give those two corners a little curl, then when they hit the card, they kind of know automatically to slide down into that closed position. And if you haven't glued down all the thatch, then some of those little pieces are going to be bent by the card, which I like, I think it adds to the authenticity. But if you don't wanna see that happen, then you'll have to glue all your thatch all the way down. Okay, now I'm going to add the bar tops. So that die comes in the set and I've cut it twice. So after brushing my bar tops with a little bit of brown ink, I'm going to add my glue all over the pop-up top portion of the bar support and then just get that bar in there and attached to that glue. And then I do the same thing on the side, just the glue on the top of the bar support, and then just take my bar top, slide it in there and attach it to that glue. Now, you know, it's kind of hard to get good pressure with it in the popped up position. You don't want to collapse anything while you just give it enough pressure to where it starts to set up. And then you can carefully close the card and give it a really good press in the closed position to make sure it's attached. There are three different little drinks in the set, individual drinks, and they all have a stencil feature to add the actual liquid to the glass. So I'm using my favorite colored pens to stencil through the dies. Those are Statler Tripless Fineliners. 
Now the cardstock I'm using is just white cardstock, but I've added some double-sided adhesive tape to the back so that those are actually sticker drinks. Now I found this fiddly to do on camera because I was trying to find the right angle for it, but I took the same drink and with the double-sided adhesive on it, but this time with the adhesive on top. And I stuck that to the building basically so that it was mostly out over the opening. And then I put my stencil drink that's the exact same shape over the top of the one behind it. And then I could basically pinch it to where it hugged the building and stood up on the bar like this. Now, another way I could have done it would have been to add maybe a strip of transparency across that opening, and then I could put the drinks wherever I wanted to. But if you want to just put them on the edges, that's one way to do it, which is to do a sandwich of one attached to the inside of the bar and then the same shape attached to the outside, just kind of so that a little bit of the building is sandwiched between the layers. And you can absolutely lift up the roof the way you saw me do it so that you can reach inside there to get good pressure against those drinks. There really are a lot of great all-purpose decorator dies included in that Beach Bar add-ons set. So with a palm tree, I'm going to attach that to the back of the bar and just making sure that it stays within the limits of the card when the card is closed. And then I can take my second palm tree and just put it at a different angle. In fact, I think I'm just going to glue it to the first one so that I can have it raise up even higher in the air. And I just, again, have to watch the limits of my card. But that five by six card gives me a lot of room for tall palm trees. Now, when the roof comes up, it's going to push those palm trees back a little bit, and that's fine. I like that look. So I just don't glue the trunk all the way to the top. I just glue it basically at the base of the trunk to the back of the house, and then the roof of the bar will just push the palm trees back a little bit. There are two different flamingos in the set. They also have a stencil feature, so I'm using a black pen for the eyes and a pink pen for the wings. So similar to the drinks, I'm going to do a sandwiching thing, but I'm not going to let the legs stick together. I want to keep those legs separated so that I can actually sandwich them over the top of the sand. I like to use a black brush marker to color in the beaks and the leg. Okay, so the flamingo that has his neck down a little bit, that's the one, the one that's pointing towards the bar. I'm going to sandwich those legs around the end of one of those sand pieces. So the sand piece also comes in the set. And I've got it pretty far out on that sand piece so that when I glue it to the front of the bar, the flamingo itself is far enough out that it won't get caught up in the roof when it comes down. So just some adhesive on the end of the sand, and then I can just slide it behind the bar supports and attach it to the front of the bar. And again, I'm just looking for a position so that as I close the card and the roof comes down, that it doesn't get tangled in the flamingo. I've sandwiched a standing flamingo on the left side of my next sandbar, and I can actually have that come up to the fold of the card, and I'm just going to hold that in place. It's basically face down on the card right now, so I can figure out where my adhesive should go, and then I can just lift it up and attach it to the front of those bar supports. In this case, the flamingo wasn't placed very well because the bar was hitting it, but all I had to do was just tilt the flamingo back a little bit, and then it was fine. It missed the bar completely. So I probably should have put it a little further towards the left if I wanted it to be standing straight up, but this works fine. And then the final strip of sand will go on the left side of the bar, and I have a flamingo out on the end. Once again, I'm going to slide it behind the bar supports and attach it to the side of the bar, but then I do need to check that I've got that flamingo far enough out that it will not get tangled in the roof when the card closes. Here's a little bonus idea. If you take a piece of cardstock that is small enough to fit through the opening of the thatched roof die, then you can use it to make the fringed end of a beach towel. So my piece of cardstock is, a, I think, about three quarters of an inch by an inch and a half. And then I've just taped that down so that the end goes through the die and into the thatched pattern. And then that's going to make that fringe. Then I can turn it around, put the other end through, try and get about the same distance and repeat the process. And then I just went to the scrap bin and found a cool little scrap of pattern paper that I could use in the center. 
Another one of our new dies is our beach borders, and that includes a cute little line of crabs, and there is a stencil feature for the eyes. So after die cutting, just leave the paper in the die, use a black pen, and then all of the crabs will have eyes. Now you can use those borders straight, or they're very easy to curl into shapes. You can also trim off individual crabs and use them, say for instance, if you wanted to have a crab enjoying a cocktail and on a beach towel. And once again, watch the collapse location of the roof when you're placing items on the beach. I initially placed that a little bit too far to the right and the roof was hitting it. So the inside of my card features two of those crab borders. One end is holding a label as a place to sign the card and the other end is holding the second half of my greeting, which is at the beach. For the front of the card, I'm going to tear one of the scalloped rectangles so that about four scallops remain, and then I'm gonna overlap two of them onto the waves paper, and that will make a new scalloped rectangle that fits nicely on my five by six card. The beach borders includes a border of those same size and shape drinks as the individual ones that are in the beach bar set. So again, I'm using a stencil feature to add the liquid to all of the drinks. Those, of course, could be mocktails. They don't have to be cocktails. I did have the double-sided adhesive on the back of the cardstock when I made that, so now those are self-adhesive. I've trimmed it in half and used it in the corners of my card front. And then I just finished out the rest of the card with some more of those labels, a palm tree, the first half of the greeting, flamingo, a couple crabs, and then glued it all to the front of my card. And here is my finished beach happy hour card. Every hour is happy hour at the beach. And definitely experiment with that die set. You can choose to use only one of the bar openings instead of both or none and then make it into a beach hut or it could be a surf shack, you know, something else. So you could use that thatched roof on the tiny house with or without the bar openings. My finished card measures six by five and will mail in an A7 envelope. Here's a five by five square card. And on this one, I use that transparency trick across the opening so that I can place the drinks anywhere across the bar openings. For this class card, I changed up the greeting and it says every hour is happy at the beach. So you can definitely do that. And there may be some times when you're sending it to somebody where the drinks would not be appropriate. So you could remove those. It could be a t-shirt shop or a surf shack or a tiki hut. Using your computer or a label maker to add the words don't worry, you could make don't worry beach happy. And this is a good example of using the tiny house with the thatched roof and the palm trees without the bar openings. And now it's a beach house. This is another class card and I'm using the BAM box pop-up to pop up the tiny house. I love to end assembly videos by looking at some inspiration from our very talented international design team. For this destination wedding card, Sue Small Kreider used the thatched pieces to make a fringe for the heart belly band. It says happy wedding day. Then it's a gatefold five by seven and she's added the beach bar on the right fold. And then on the left fold, she's used the thatched roof on the church and school tiny house add-ons along with the wedding charms. Then she has a slot for a gift card over here, best wishes, and I mean, what couple wouldn't be thrilled to get a card like this on their wedding day? Suzanne Smith has the perfect example of using the beach bar for a birthday card, no drinks anywhere. She has the picnic elements, crab, some fun lights and presents. I love the palm trees out on the end of the sandbars. This next card by Jen Webster is just amazing. She's made life's a beach for the greeting. I love her Copic work on those palm trees. Inside, enjoy the waves and look at those animals wearing swimsuits and hanging out in life preservers. I absolutely love it. The beach bar is adorable. Even down to the multicolored drink. Lois Bach made this beach time card and inside is the beach bar. Every hour is happy hour, and she's used that BAM box technique to pop it up so that it doesn't have to be built on a fold. The Beach Bar Tiny House add-ons is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.
If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.